Welcome to the Vertical MRO Podcast, brought to you by Vertical Helicast. In this episode, John Gray takes the helm in Val's absence to discuss the newly announced Vertical Maintenance Repair and Overhaul Conference with an esteemed panel of guests, Linda Reno, Mike Reno, Leslie Ferry, and Madison Reno. Join us as the speakers share their vision for creating a vibrant atmosphere at the conference, explore the crucial role of the VMRO podcast in fostering ongoing industry dialogues, and highlight the importance of social media engagement within the MRO community. We'll dive into the significance of hands-on training, leadership development, and networking in the Rotocraft MRO sector. Plus, we'll showcase the stunning locations for the conferences, Kelowna, British Columbia, from October 7th to 10th, 2025, and the Dallas-Fort Worth area from November 10th to 12th, 2025. Thank you to our sponsors, Safe Structure Designs, Salus Aviation, and Precision Aviation Group. Welcome to the Vertical MRO Podcast, brought to you by Vertical Helicasts. All right, everyone, uh, you're at our contact, you're cleared to the Bravo. The Vertical MRO Podcast explores the fascinating world of helicopter maintenance, repair, and overhaul with your host, Val Medved. Now line out 7329, approved as requested. The podcast features helicopter technicians, mechanics, engineers, and MRO experts who share invaluable industry insight, knowledge, and stories that will inspire current and aspiring industry maintainers. Hey, welcome to the Vertical MRO Podcast. I'm your host, John Gray. Today, standing in for Val Medved, who's in Phoenix doing some work. And uh, I'm honored to sit with this group of people today. Uh, this group of people has changed and positively impacted the helicopter community in so many ways. So today we're going to talk about something that's up and coming that you've probably seen in a press release, but we're going to talk about it. So with us is Miss Linda Rena. How are you, ma'am? I'm great. Thank you, John. Great to be here. Yeah. Mike, how are you, sir? I'm doing well. First time being on any of your podcasts. So this is, uh, <laughs> this is exciting. Long time listener, first time caller. For that, exactly, that's what it is. Very, very starstruck right now, John. Very starstruck. <laughs> well, we've been talking about recording for a long time, and it's it's an honor to, to finally make that happen. Um, so, Mike, you've you've not only got you and Linda in here, but you've got Madison as well. So, MHM, can you talk about the the name MHM and and where Maddie falls in that? Yeah. So the name MHM comes from me, Maddie, my sister, Hannah, my twin sister, Hannah, um, and then my older brother, Mitchell. So I'm one of the M's. There's a debate of if I'm the first M or the last M. <laughs> Self-proclaimed first, but. <laughs> of course. Of course. And Leslie Ferry, it's been an honor get, to get to know you and uh, you're a part of this amazing team. Can you uh, introduce yourself and give us a little bit of information on your background? Sure. My name is Leslie Ferry, and I am the newest uh, member of the MHM team. So excited to work with such a, a awesome group of people. Um, I've been in aviation for the past two decades, primarily working at uh, Bell and uh, working with uh, M&O conferences. So I'm excited to take the knowledge and skills I learned there and implement here and all the exciting things that we've got going on that we're going to share with everyone today. Yeah, we're we're coming to you on the heels of conference season. You know, yeah. Mike and Linda and Maddie and Leslie, we've all been at conferences and we just finished European Rotors, which is absolutely amazing. Over the last few weeks, there's there's been uh, some press releases that have come out. There's one in particular that I want to talk about. And, and Linda, maybe you could brief us on the contents of that press release and, and kind of where we're going to go with this conversation. Sure, absolutely. So... Just to back up, um, actually, even just a few years ago, Mike and I had been talking about um, starting a conference of our own because we've also, all of us on this call have attended so many trade shows of our, of our own, we felt like we wanted to get into a conference as well. So it just wasn't the right time a few years ago. Anyway, fast forward to um, earlier this year, we recognized that there was a hole in the industry as far as a conference that was dedicated to the um, maintenance, repair and overhaul community. So, you know, we kept on talking to people in the industry and kind of getting feedback on what's out there and what's available right now. And there really wasn't anything there. There isn't anything. So anyway, we were lucky to have um, been introduced to Leslie. And um, from there, the conversation kept going. And now we're really excited to 
be able to actually talk about what we've had um, behind the scenes for the past six months or so um, with a dedicated maintenance repair and overhaul conference. Going back to uh, the press release that came out while we were attending European Rotors, um, everybody was so excited. We had so many people coming up to our booth going, oh my God, this is what we have been waiting for. Thank you so much. So we're so excited to talk about um, the show that's going to be happening in Kelowna, the beginning of October. And then the second event that's going to be happening in Irving, Texas. So just really super excited to be able to finally talk about it and let everybody know what we've been working on, because it's going to be something that um, nobody's seen before, nobody's attended before, something like this. And some of the ideas that we have that we've been bouncing around, it's just, it's going to be so good. It's going to be, like I said, something that nobody's attended before. It's going to be fun. It's going to be informative. Um, we're just really super excited about it. I feel like everything Vertical or MHM does as a company, they, they do, do right. You know, there's, there's no corners that are cut. Everything's done with strict attention to detail. And this is going to be awesome. You know, I think about conferences and what it's done for me in my career, networking, education, and training. Those are the things that you get at, at conferences. And when you go to the conferences that exist now, you don't really see a whole lot of focus placed on the engineering side of the world. So like you said, it's it's kind of an underserved uh, portion of, of our community. And I'm really excited that you guys have stepped up to, to kind of fill that void in the industry. Leslie, you have a, a rich history with these these types of events when you were at Bell. Can you talk about those events that you put on a Bell and how that will translate into what we're doing here? Sure. Uh, I was brought into the whole maintenance side of uh, helicopters probably about 15 years ago, and I knew nothing about maintenance. You know, I had flown in helicopters before, but never really knew what goes into it. And to me, maintenance is the heart of it. You know, so um, working at Bell, we would stage uh, these events around the world, wherever we had a customer base. And we really focused on uh, maintenance, providing different uh, session topics. And then we would incorporate a trade show uh, area with it. Um, but probably one of the most exciting things about it for me was just the networking part of it. You get a group of people together. Um, a lot of these people have worked together in the past and it's kind of like a big family reunion. So I really want to replicate what we did at Bell here for the entire helicopter maintenance community and uh, just bring people like-minded people together and share knowledge and uh, provide networking and really celebrate achievements within maintenance yeah th those conferences are amazing the networking part of it is is almost more valuable in some ways than the training and education that goes there and i wouldn't say that for certain but when you think about the networking that takes place you go to these conference courses throughout the course of your 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 trip and then you go to the bar and, and so many problems have been solved over a napkin at a bar. Exactly. And, you know, Mike, exactly. Mike, you, you've seen that over the course of your career attending all these conferences. What is your hope and, and what do you hope to accomplish through putting this conference on? Uh, and what can folks look for that are attending these conferences? So I think when we looked at um, putting this conference together, um, to, to kind of go back uh, a few minutes when you're talking about, you know, if we're going to do it, we do things right. And that's where we had always looked at, okay, we want to get into conferences. We identified that the rotorcraft MRO sector was, was uh, significantly undervalued that what we see in the industry. So we identified that, but if we're going to do this right, that's where bringing Leslie on board was a very big part of that. So we needed to have that sort of expertise in order to, move forward with uh, with a conference so so bringing that piece together was instrumental to to now okay this is what the conference is going to be this is how we want to do it what we've done is we're taking those um, nuggets that we've seen at other conferences that that work very well uh, we're learning from those that say don't work very well and we're bringing the basically the best practices to come together with the the vertical MRO conference or VMRO is what uh, is what we're calling it now. Um, so things that we want to do is um, have the educational sessions, hands on training, um, panel discussions, but these things that can really speak to addressing some 
real issues that are going on in the industry right now. Um, you know, one of the most significant issues that are that's uh, that's happening right now in the industry, and actually, I don't think it matters what industry you're, you're in, but people. Um, we have a very big people uh, issue within the rotorcraft MRO sector to the point that now it's becoming a larger problem than say what the pilot shortage uh, has been. So without uh, mechanics or engineers, these helicopters are not going to fly. So with what we're bringing, um, we're looking at how do we attract people to the industry? How do we deal with things like uh, leadership skills? How do we deal thing with things like uh, employment retention? So there's things that uh, we can deal with as an industry, but then also having those other hands-on type um, sessions. You know, if uh, if we're talking about a hook, can we have onboard systems there that we can talk about maintaining and performing maintenance on a hook? Uh, SEI uh, on scene with a, with a Bambi bucket to show you how to do uh, field repair on a uh, on a Bambi bucket, and then of course, as big part of that is having the OEMs present that can provide their own technical briefings. But again. We want to have hands-on training. We don't want death by PowerPoint. We want to offer training that we feel is valuable to those that are attending. And then as far as from the exhibiting side is to ensure that we have the audience that's there, um, that they're looking to connect with. And I think that's the biggest thing that we've seen at a lot of the shows that we attend, especially the smaller shows. I talked to a lot of the the different exhibitors at these shows and the the – number one feedback that I get for those companies that are maintenance uh, focused is that there is very little value for them at a lot of these shows that they go to. There's nothing there for them. They're not meeting with uh, DOMs. They're not making meeting with mechanics or engineers, and there's no sessions really that are, that are for them. So we hope that with uh, VMRO, that we're going to address a lot of those uh, shortfalls in the industry. I was just going to tag on to what Mike was saying. Uh, one of the other things that we've noticed is a lot of times when you go to these shows, you look around and it's exhibitors talking to exhibitors. So where's the value for them? Yeah, the conversations are good, but uh, we want to make sure that we're scheduling everything when so that ex the education sessions are not going on at the same time that the exhibit floor is open. So we're looking at having, you know, eight to 10 hours of dedicated exhibit time at these conferences where the exhibitors are going to be talking to the attendees, whether that's the directors of purchasing or the DOMs or the actual wrench turners or what at, what have you. Yeah, that that's huge. I think you go to conferences sometimes as a consumer, and and you're like, okay, well, what do I do now? You know, and there's some dead time, and I think that you guys have some great ideas to to prevent that from happening. You know, if you're if you're in a class, you're dedicated to that. If you're not in a class, you've got the time to walk around the, the conference floor and. Look, look to the vendors and look for solutions to problems you're dealing with at your at your home base. So I, I think that'll be great. Um, Mike, you brought up something that I want to go back to for a minute. You talked about recruitment and retention. You know, it's a major issue that's facing our industry as, as a whole right now. And I think, you know, if you look at the way people consume information, um, it's that's changed dramatically as you guys have seen through through vertical and the consumption of that. I uh, want to talk about social media and its role in the recruitment and retention and in, this, in the information sharing uh, within the community that we're part of. So, Maddie, really happy to, to see you join uh, Vertical in, in this role that you're in. Can you talk about what you're doing on the social media side and how what you're doing there is going to help promote not only the MRO community, but the conference and, and the podcast and the conversations we're having there as well? Thank you to our sponsor, Solace Aviation. For comprehensive maintenance, repair, and overhaul services, Solace provides in-house expertise, world-class technology, and certifications to service the global aviation market. Excellence starts with Solace. Find out more at www.salusaviation.com. Yeah, so social media is really huge for the MRO community. Um, it's great for keeping everyone in the loop and up to date with, with what's going on um, in the industry. Um, and then also in regards to training, social media is really great for quick how-tos, um, safety reminders, or even promoting webinars. Um, and then of course, there's also a need for newer talent in the industry. Um, and so it's really helping bring together or bringing in this younger talent by showing off kind of like the cool side to the industry, like behind the scenes um, shots of maintenance projects or highlighting new technologies. 
So that's really great. Um, so overall, it's just making the MRO world more connected. Um, and then, of course, there are really great pages out there already um, made by mechanics and engineers that are showcasing kind of what they're doing. But what's great about our page is that it's exclusively dedicated to MRO content um, and there's not a page like that out there. So it's been really cool taking the lead on this and I'm excited to continue the journey and build up the community. Yeah, again, it's it's kind of an underserved portion of, of our aviation community is is the MRO community. It's really cool seeing seeing folks getting there on social media, getting their hands dirty and and showing off. We'll talk about Faith Ortega for a second, showing some of the components that, that she's talking about. And I think when you going back to the recruitment or retention, when when people see that who may not be in the aviation community and they, and she uncovers let's say a, a tailroad gearbox or something, it it really to me sparks some interest, and that's what will kind of drive this recruitment wave that we need to take place in our, our community. So I think what you're doing there is really cool and it's serving a much needed portion of our community. And I think John, you know, one of the things that's been important for us uh, here at vertical is that how do we highlight the maintenance community? So there's all these different um, pieces of the puzzle that we've been putting together uh, over the last little while. Uh, one of the things that's always been important for us in vertical is we always do a lot of operator profiles we always ensure that maintenance is part of that when we're putting these together, uh, when we're doing different company profiles um, that can relate to the, the MRO world. Um, again, we're the only ones that have, been, that have been pushing this. And that led us into the MRO podcast. Um, you know, we, de we delved into the, uh, to the world of podcasts um, last year and the, the last piece of the puzzle for 2024 was we needed that MRO podcast. And that's, you know, with Val um, wanted to take that on, which was fantastic. But it was, again, to build that, continue to build that awareness in that community and then leading it into the social media and now with the conference. And I think as, a, as an industry, um, we haven't done a great job of telling those outside of our community of how amazing it is. Um, there's a lot of really interesting things about the helicopter industry. And just from a, from a maintenance perspective, the opportunity that, you know, to put, if you're in the United States or in Canada, that you get to see a lot of, you get to go to a lot of places that you would never normally travel to. Yeah. Um, for the most part, it's pretty good. I mean, <laughs> you don't want to be out uh, stuck on the on a fire in Saskatchewan for two months uh, looking after a helicopter. But but there are parts of the world that it, it, it's allowed you to explore. So I think that's one of the things is that by shedding the light on this community, that will continue to help build awareness of uh, what's out there, and and hopefully we can get the attention of those outside to get them interested in uh, in the maintenance, repair, and overhaul side. Yeah, for sure. I think about each each community that you're part of or, or each program that you're part of every program has their individual problems that they're, they're trying to deal with and find solutions to. And it's hard sometimes to, to reinvent a wheel. And then you realize I don't have to, I can go to a conference and I can talk to people who are probably dealing with these same issues. It might be in Canada. They might be in the U S they could be in Europe. They could be anywhere. They're dealing with the same problems that we are. So it's really great to go to a conference like this and find solutions to problems that you're having without having to reinvent the wheel. You know, it's literally over a course that you took and a, and a beer over a, a napkin and some ideas that are that are drawn on that. So I, I love conferences for that reason. There's there's so much positivity that, that comes out of that. Um, I just I, I love that part of it. I, know, uh, and I think. Oh, sorry, John. And I was going to add to that comment, too, because I think what's important is during our conference is to keep everybody together as much as possible for that reason. So there's lots of collaborating, lots of shared interests, shared topics, um, shared concerns, whatever that is. I, keeping everybody together is really going to be important to us as well. And that's, you know, we have some really good ideas around some events that we're going to host that will keep everybody together the entire time for the two and a half days that this runs. Um, and just providing like working with, you know, some of the operators that are in Kelowna themselves so that we can potentially use some of their facilities to have hands on training and and those kinds of things as well. So really trying to think out of the box when it comes to this conference. That's huge because a lot of these conferences you go to, you go and you're on the, the floor together with these folks and in classes with them. But at the end of the day, there's different people having different events and you're, you get separated. And I like the idea of keeping everybody in one central location for what you just said, the networking that takes place, the problems that are solved with there at those locations. And then, you know, every time you leave a conference, two, two months later, you're like, oh, I'm, I'm having this problem. I wish I knew somebody. And they're like, oh, wait, I do. I met 
I met somebody at this conference and I've got their card and it's not a cold call at that time. Now you have an established rapport with this person. You call them and you're like, hey, I've got this problem. And then you solve it through that, that network and it takes place. So I, I love all of that. Leslie, in your experience with Bell, uh, being a part of these, what did you see in the aftermath of these conferences and, and how will that carry over to this conference as far as the networking and problem solving goes? Well, it kind of goes hand in hand with what you were just talking about. You know, a lot of times if you're having issues and you're not really quite sure who to call, you you don't have a relationship with anyone at the OEM to call and ask questions, you know, why is this happening with the tail rotor or whatever? Um, once you've met someone face to face, you have that rapport. So it's very easy to pick up the phone and call them and or, or follow up with them with an email. And uh, so, you know, the networking part of it is key. The other thing I wanted to bring up, you know, that goes hand in hand with what we were talking about with getting newer, younger kids into the industry and telling, showing them how cool it can be is we want to invite students and apprentices to these conferences at no charge. Uh, so that they can get it, sit in on these uh, presentations and be part of the hands-on training and spend time out on the exhibit floor talking with folks. And if we can, you know, really show them what an awesome industry it is and, and you know, that's, that's only going to help the industry out. So. Absolutely. You, you hit on the mentorship side of our community. And I remember as a, a brand new TFO in the law enforcement world, going to a, a conference and a guy by the name of Tony Weber is one of my good friends to this day. He'd been in the industry already for 20 years. And I'm here. I am this brand new kid. And I get to go to lunch with Tony and I'm starstruck by this guy. Cause he's, he's amazing. And he was the nicest guy in the world. And he ended up being a mentor to me. And I think that same thing's going to happen here. You know, you're going to, mm -hmm. as a student come in and, and be inspired by the folks you meet to see where your, where your career could potentially go. Yeah, you hear some of those stories of the folks that have been in the industry for decades and where they've gone and what they've done and what they've seen. It's just, it's incredible to me when I get to hear those stories. So if you're someone just coming into the industry, yeah, I would just think that that's going to make you want to continue that path down that path. Yeah. And even, I just wanted to jump in, even like me coming into like this industry, obviously I've heard my parents talk all about it and everything but then to like go to the conferences that i've been to the trade shows i've been to and to meet all these people and see all these things it, it's been really great and exciting so i can imagine that new people coming in as well would get to experience that so yeah and i, th I think traditionally the conferences are, are a little prohibitive for new folks young young folks to, to come because the, the price tag is often so high that you can't get in so you guys have made it to where it's achievable for for students and, and young uh, apprentices to get in which i think is going to be great and John, just to add to that, that was part of, you know, before we went too far with our decisions on how this conference was going to look, the first thing we did was reach out to key individuals in the industry and had really good focus groups. And in those focus groups, we took away a lot of information on the things to do and the things not to do. And of course, that included like the timing of the conference. All of this has been very methodical on, um, when to host the show, where to host the show, um, session topics. All of this has been talked about with those key individuals who have helped us kind of come up with some of these really great ideas. And one of the things that came out was, of course, like, we have to get the students in. We want to get those apprentices in. How do we do that? Well, we have to make it cost effective. And some of the shows that you attend now, it is, it's cost prohibitive for these people. So that was one of the key things that came out of the focus group as well. So these things are all definitely top of mind for us. We wanna make sure that this is something that everybody can attend and gain knowledge and walk away with, you know, all that tribal knowledge. So yeah. that was really important to us. Um, also being able to, uh, after they take these education courses, to be able to use that towards recurrent training credit for Transport Canada, and then in the US uh, for IA renewal, that's key as well. Yeah, any anytime you can add to that part of someone's career development is, is huge. You know, it's not only a benefit to their overall career, but it's, it's a benefit to them today, you know, because they're mm -hmm. getting taking care of these, these CEs that they need. Right. I think a lot of people, Mike, you, you had referenced other conferences that, that people go to. And I think a lot of folks may have an idea of what to expect when you go to a conference. But I feel like this is going to be radically different than, than most AMEs experience from what they've experienced in, in prior conferences. Can you talk about what somebody can expect 
uh, when, when they walk through the door, at least in how we envision it and, and the kind, types of training that might take place and, and kind of what, what that'll look like. Safe Structure Designs offers creative, customizable ergonomic safety solutions with over 20 years of experience. Their custom design process is free, ensuring safety and efficiency. Let them create your ideal solution. Visit www.safe-2.com. That's www.safe-2.com for more information. John, so I think there's uh, what those attending can expect is going to be much different than what they're used to um, in attending other shows. Um, for most of actually all the other shows they've attended, it's always been for um, kind of like the greater community versus just focused in on that uh, Rotocraft MRO community. Um, so as part of that, there's two locations that uh, that were selected. Um, the first is uh, is going to be uh, for the Canadian side, and that will be at the Kelowna, the KF Center of Excellence, and that's going to be held October 7th and 9th. And the reason that that location was uh, was chosen is because it's right at the airport, so it has that aviation feel to it. So we worked uh, very closely with KF um, on coming up with you know what we want this venue to to look like, um, what we can do in the way of sessions and things like that. So they're working with us that we can basically offer something that is almost immersive um, in how we're approaching the show. And then the same will hold true for our show that we'll be having in Irving, Texas. And that's going to be November 10th to 12th. And again, we, we selected that location also based off of uh, proximity to uh, a very large helicopter market that's in that region. Same goes for Kelowna uh, with a very large concentration of helicopters. Um, so what they can expect is not your typical um, hotel ro- uh, ballroom type setting where a lot of these smaller shows take place. Um, what they can expect here is that um, we can have up to 40 exhibitors in Canada. We can have up to 60 exhibitors in the U.S. right now. But then also having some uh, panel discussions on the show floor um, as things are happening, how we can have sessions off on their own where we can have that hands-on training. We've already had discussions uh, with several companies that have asked, can we bring stuff that we can do that training Um We've heard everything right up to rotor blades so far that, you know, can we have that hands-on training with uh, with rotor blades? So I think that's the biggest thing is that what we're going to bring is that is the hands-on training. And then meeting with those people in the industry, it's like we keep on talking about we're losing the tribal knowledge in the industry. So how can we meet with – how can the younger generation meet with the older generation – and even to that point, like one of the panel discussions that uh, that we're going to have is we're going to have like it's kind of like the old guard and the new guard. You know, what are the challenges that they dealt with, um, you know, when it came to field maintenance versus what are they dealing with now? Um, so I think it's a what we're bringing to the table. It just it doesn't exist. And that even goes right down to um, doing uh, skills competitions. You know, how can we work? Um, it could be say from the sheet metal side, it could be from composites. It could be, you know, there's a swash plate. There's a, you have to troubleshoot whatever that problem is with the swash plate. So again, just giving them that hands-on experience. Yeah. That, that part's huge. You know, we've attended the echo conference and I always liked what they did with, with the, the medical side of, of the industry. They've got, um, cadaver labs and essentially you, you've created the same thing with, with what we're talking about, just on the mechanical side. So I think it'll be really cool to go to a conference and not just talk theory, but actually get your hands in and get dirty a little bit and get to, to practice a little bit of the theory that you've just talked about in a class potentially. So that's all super exciting to me. And if I can just throw in for the overall atmosphere, a lot of times when you go to these conventions, they're kind of cold and impersonal. And I really want this to feel warm and friendly where everyone feels welcome and it just has that vibe to it where it's just a bunch of folks, like-minded folks getting together to learn, network, and, um, you know, just and have some fun. Yeah, that that's the, the biggest part is having fun. I, you know, I think about the conferences that I've been to, and I, I usually leave fired up for whatever I've just learned. And it's super exciting. It kind of gives you that extra pep in your step to to get back to work, to implement the things you've you've learned. 
one thing I like that what what you guys have done to kind of further that is is you've created the the VMRO podcast. So a lot of times you go to conferences and you you leave fired up, and all the conversations you've you've heard and been a part of kind of fade away over the course of the year. But with the VMRO podcast, those conversations continue. You know, bringing the industry's best speakers into the podcast to talk about things, and it kind of keeps you engaged. So to to leave the conference, have all these ideas, and then continue that that you know passion for the career through the, the listenership that's developing in the VMRO podcast has, has been exciting. And I think it'll be great. So it'll be neat to see how those two feed into each other, you know, and and how we lean on each other in, in those because I think we're, we've talked a lot about the the challenges facing our community. Talked about tribal knowledge and how important that is. Talked about recruitment retention and the the role that social media plays in that. We've talked about mental health, emerging technologies. Leadership is one thing that I'm that I'm really interested in because, you know, again, you get tapped on the shoulder one day and the next day you're all of a sudden leading a group of people and you've got no real experience doing that. So I'm I'm curious to to hear Mike from you uh, how this conference will help potential leaders in their career. So I think when we talk about uh, some of the th- some of the different types of sessions that we want to that we want to have, um, we look at uh, promotion within the uh, within the industry. So you've just been promoted to a supervisor. Nine times out of ten, there is no training as far as leadership training that goes along with that. So all of a sudden, you're just you're handed a task, and now you might have you might have one person that's reporting to. To you, you might have ten that are reporting to you, um, but how do you deal with that team effectively? So that's where we wanted to bring in some leadership um, training for those people because it just hasn't existed. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you how do you deal with things like uh, inventory control? How do you deal with things like you know one of the the um, discussions that came up is that you know when it comes to um, working with different vendors, they'll say, well, you know that transmission it was always it was over uh, overhauled by xyz well why does it go to xyz well because we always sent it there you know there is how do we work towards um developing those skills as far as okay how do we how are we getting best pricing for that work how do we find some of the best vendors that are out there instead of just working with we always just did that over the however many years um so i think with with some of the the sessions that we're working on to help foster and develop those skills um, that will certainly help the community. And that was, again, that was something that was very important as part of our focus group um, when we were discussing that with them is that what additional um, soft skills can we offer that will help the community? And uh, and there were some great examples that we were given during the, those, uh, the focus group. Um, instances where um, people lacked leadership skills. And it's like, and that goes down to those leadership skills help you to better work with your vendors, with the OEMs on how to achieve some of the things that you're trying to accomplish versus going in there hot and heavy that get this repaired because you go in that way and we know what happens. Things start to slow down. Right. Um, so I think that's very important is that we're bringing that to the table as well. And, that, and again, it goes back to these are certain um, things that have not been offered at other venues. Right. Well, we're going to change that. Yeah, no, that's huge. The, the, the leadership thing is is interesting because, like you said, you're one day tapping the shoulder, and all of a sudden the next day you're you're a supervisor. You're you're leading people, and that maybe hasn't been a part of your career that you focused on in the past. Not of your own fault, but just because of the way the community is set up, it's hard to find a place to find that that type of training. So I'm I'm excited to see that develop. And then Leslie, going back to you, you know, with your experiences in the MNO conferences in the past. What have you seen uh, as a benefit, in a walk away from those conferences? You know, these people leave, and some of the feedback you hear that you expect to to be magnified through this this conference. Some of the uh, comments that I've heard over the years after folks attend a conference or an event like this is just the opportunity for expanded education. You know, learning more about the different parts and pieces, components of the aircraft and the different kits that go on the aircraft and just learning more about the aircraft helps them be better at their job. 
but I think the key thing that I hear over and over and over is just the people that they've met and the relationships that they've developed, the mentors that they've found. And it's, it's all about that networking and finding people uh, within the industry that you can uh, really bond with and learn from. And, um, and then also carry that on and perpetuate it by, you know, finding others that you can be a mentor to. So it's, it's, yeah. to me, it's all about the relationships. Yeah, absolutely. And going back to part of our conversation earlier, we talked about uh, social media, the role that plays in in communication and in the consumption of content in our community. Uh, so I'm excited to see again how the the social media channel that we've created, Maddie, that you're running, how that'll play into the conference. Can you talk about some of the methods and ways that people might be able to reach out and ask questions or or uh, maybe give suggestions on some of the things they'd like to see within the the conference? Yeah, for sure. Um, we really want to make our social media page very interactive. We want to hear from people. So we'd love if we got tagged in some of our some of our audience's maintenance shots, um, things like that. We would love to share that on our page and again, keep building up this community. Um, and then also if anyone has any questions about the conference or questions about the podcast, anything in general, we would love to you know, hear in, in our DMs or in our comments. Um, and yeah, we want to hear also what you want to see. So if there's any suggestions, again, DMs are open, comments are open. So that'd be great. I think one of the things that I like about Instagram in particular is, is the hashtags. You know, if, yes. if there's something you like about uh, helicopters, you can hashtag law enforcement aviation and you can yeah. see all the, the things that come from that. So I encourage folks, if, if you're out in the shop and you're doing something cool, hashtag VMRO, uh, VMRO socials or what hashtags would you recommend, Maddie, for that to, to be seen by you and, and pushed out through the community? Yeah, absolutely. So we want to make our socials um, very interactive. We want to have two-way communication going on between us and our audience. So we'd love to hear from everyone. Um, you can tag us at vertical.mro or hashtag VMRO. We want to get um, some maintenance shots shared on our page. Um, of course, if you have any questions as well, our DMs are open for that, um, for that conversation to happen, as well as in our comment section. So we definitely want our audience to, to be reaching out to us in those ways. Awesome. Yeah, that's a huge part of our community, the building of our community, it's just having that forum to go to and either ask questions or, or consume information. That, that's, that's huge. Thank you to our sponsor, Precision Aviation Group. Mission critical operators and fleet managers rely on Precision Aviation Group as a worldwide leading rotor and fixed wing MRO provider. PAG provides tip to tail solutions in four MRO segments, avionics, components, engines, and manufacturing DER services. A single point of contact gives you access to over 150 million in inventory globally 24 seven. Just call 800-537-2778. Precision Aviation Group. Others sell parts. We sell support. I was just going to say that um, our website, so if you go to verticalmro.com, uh, you can go on there, put your email address in, and you're going to get updates as we get them so we can keep everybody informed on what's happening with the conference our goal is to have that website up and running and uh, be able to share more details come the first week of December. So again, it's verticalmro.com uh, and uh, sign up for all the information there as well. Awesome. I'm assuming at some point that's the place where people will go to actually register and, and sign up for the event. Absolutely. Registration awesome. will be opening in early March. Okay, great. Yeah, that gives time for folks to, to submit their requests for travel and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, I've never been to Kelowna. So what can I expect as a first time visitor to Kelowna? Can you talk about the city a little bit and what people may experience? I'm going to let Leslie do that one because uh, you've been there so many times, but you're anybody going to Kelowna will love it. But I'll let Leslie answer that. Kelowna is beautiful. It's and the uh, time of year that we're going to be there in early October, you know, fall will be in, in full bloom. Um, one of the reasons that Kelowna was selected as the site for our uh, launch of this event was it's the helicopter mecca of Canada. There are just so many helicopter operators flying in that area. So, so many of our attendees, we expect to be locals and they know the beauty of Kelowna. But anyone that's going to be uh, flying in to uh, join us, it's just a great small 
it has has a small town feel to it. Uh, it's gorgeous with the lakes and the water and the mountains. There's uh, lots of wineries and the craft brewery scene really seems to be picking up there. So I think that when people are making their plans to come to Kelowna to attend the vertical MRO conference, they probably want to add a, a day on at the beginning or a couple days on at the end and stick around and just check out everything that the city has to offer. It's really a great place and really friendly people i heard craft beer so I'm, I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> we're working on something kind of fun with that too so you know you just make it to try that craft beer at the event we'll see <laughs> <laughs> awesome so we've, we've talked about uh the conference in, in canada in Kelowna. i'm really excited for the u.s conference as well uh texas has become the mecca of helicopters in the u.s so i'm always excited to go to texas for that reason can you talk about what people can expect in, in Irving? Yeah, Irving just kind of made sense. Um, as Mike had alluded to earlier, there are so many uh, operators here in this area, as well as uh, you've got Airbus represented here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. You've got Bell represented. We've got Safran. And so it just kind of made sense. The other key thing about Irving is it's centrally located. So if we've got folks that are wanting to fly in from the East Coast or the West Coast, it's, it's very central. Irving is located uh, just right there at at Dallas Fort Worth International Airport, so it's just it's just an easy uh, way. It's easy to get to from the airport. Uh, we'll be at the Irving Convention Center. It's uh, a relatively new convention center. It's uh, it's not one of the huge ones that you, you're used to seeing at a, uh, a Heli Expo or a Verticon. Uh, so it's just the right size for our event. It's located in a great, very walkable area uh, where there's lots of different restaurants and entertainment venues just right there within walking distance. So it's going to be great. We'll have um, a little more space there where we can spread out, have uh, more exhibitors, uh, have more education sessions, and just more mingling space. So I'm really excited to have uh, the conference in my very own backyard. Yeah. Yeah, Texas is awesome. You know, going back to we talked about Kelowna with the beer. Texas is a great craft beer scene. In addition to that, they've got all the, the, the smoke houses. You know, the, the smoked meats that are in Texas. The barbecue is amazing. So uh, those are the two things that are a must must see outside of the conference itself. Um, so I'm I'm excited for both locations. I think there's going to be a lot for for people to to see and do, and it'll be a huge benefit for their careers. You know, going there, and and so I'm excited to see the, the takeaways from that. Um, but before we close out, uh, we'll, we'll go to, to kind of final thoughts and then, and then, um, we'll, we'll go from there. So Mike, for you, any, any kind of closing thoughts on, on the conference and, and what you're excited for? I think what we're, we're excited for is shining the spotlight on the Rotocraft MRO sector. Um, as we've, we've said several times throughout this podcast is that it really is a part of the industry that has not been in the limelight but we, we need to change that for several different reasons, as we identified here. And the, the conference, uh, we see uh, the future of this is uh, exciting for us. I would have to say, um, when we sent out the press release and uh, being at European Rotors where the show was announced, we were happily surprised with the outpouring of support that came from a lot of those companies that were actually at European Rotors. Uh, the question was asked, you know, so it's Canada and the U.S., uh, where to next? So stay tuned on that one. Um, but we will look at how we can continue to build that awareness, not just with the conference, but other things through the podcast, through social media channels, and through content that you'll see on Vertical as well. Yeah, the the community that surrounds the conference is, is amazing. It, I, f I feel like it all it all lends to one thing, you know, it's, it's the, the building that community. So it'll be exciting to see that grow. To, like you said, to shine the spotlight on this particular segment of the of the community, which hasn't been done a whole lot in the past, so I think it's it's much needed and will, and will be great. Now, Linda, for you, any any closing thoughts or or words of parting wisdom? Yeah, so we're just really excited to be able to finally talk about this and to um, start having those open discussions and talking to people on what they want to see as far as the show and as things develop along. We have so much to do in a 
it seems like a long period of time, but it's not. There is so much that is involved in this. And it's been a huge learning curve for especially myself, Madison and Mike, uh, you know, Leslie taking the, the lead on steering the ship. And we had no idea how much was involved and how much detail and organization goes into this. So we're so thankful to have Leslie running with this and, and uh, showing us the way. It's just going to be so exciting. You're going to want to be here. Um, and I can't wait to see everybody in Kelowna and again in Irving, Texas. It's going to be a fun time. You're going to learn so much. There's going to be such great networking that's going to happen. Um, we're just super excited. It's like that last piece of the puzzle for our overall brand. You know, you've got Vertical that started, you know, 24 years ago. And to come here at this point, it's like we've come full circle. It was like that last thing that we really wanted to, to bring to the industry. And, you know, Mike and I are so thankful that what we've been able to do in these 24 years uh, to be able to take it to this level now, it's going to be fantastic. So really looking forward to seeing everybody next year in the fall at this show and yeah. both shows, Kelowna and Irving. So very excited. Yeah. We'll have to say you guys have done amazing things for the community. Uh, the profiling you've done of, of the agencies, the, the positive promotion you've done for our community has been amazing. I go back to my first day walking through the doors of my, my, my aviation unit and seeing a vertical magazine sit on the table. And that was what would consume my time in between flights. You know, I'm reading vertical, learning about the industry, furthering my career. Little did I know that years later would I get a chance to sit down with you guys and, and do this. So it's an, it's an absolute honor for me. I'm starstruck to sit here with you guys and, and talk about it. But you, you guys are some of the best people in the world. You know, you've, you've developed this business and you're salt of the earth. You know, you're always looking for ways to continue to benefit the community. And this is that piece, you know, like you said. So it's an honor to, to see this thing grow. It'll be an honor to attend it. And it'll be an honor for the folks that, that get to come and, and, you know, to see their careers benefit as a result of your passion and desire to see the community grow. So um, thank you guys for what you've done. It's been really cool to, to kind of sit back and, and see this thing take off. You talked about the amount of work that goes into these conferences. You know, I've, I've not planned a conference, but I've, I've planned some fly-ins. And like you said, it, it seems you walk through the door and it seems like, oh, what could be so hard about planning this? Oh my gosh, there's so much work that goes into it. So kudos to you guys for, for spearheading this. Leslie, yeah, so happy to have you as part of the team and to see this grow. Any last thoughts from you before we close out? Well, I'm just so honored to be part of such a great team. And I, I appreciate the kudos and the shout outs, but really this is a team effort. Uh, there's so many different uh, people on the team that are an integral part of making this happen. And it's just, it's been so much fun working with everyone. And I just can't wait to see what, how everything turns out and really show the entire aviation industry, how cool helicopter maintenance is. Absolutely. Yep. Maddie, for you, um, you're, you're, you're last but not least for sure. Um, for, for folks that, again, may have some, some insight they'd like to share as far as things they'd like to see uh, at the conference. Can you just close out by letting us know how they could do that and what it looks like and any closing thoughts in addition to that from you? Yeah, for sure. Thank you. So um, again, we really want to hear from you. So please tag us at vertical.mro uh, for thoughts on you know what you want to see or any questions you may have. And stay tuned for all the exciting things we have going on, updates about the conference and all that fun stuff. Awesome. Well, thank you all for, for joining us and for all the listeners out there. Look forward to, to seeing you in person at the conference. Until then, we'll catch you later. Cheers. Thanks so much. Cheers. Thank Thanks, Sean. Stand by for a message after a word from our sponsors. Thank you to our sponsor, Solace Aviation. For comprehensive maintenance, repair, and overhaul services, Solace provides in-house expertise, world-class technology, and certifications to service the global aviation market. Excellence starts with Solace. Find out more at www.salusaviation.com. Safe Structure Designs offers creative, customizable ergonomic safety solutions with over 20 years of experience. Their custom design process is free, ensuring safety and efficiency. Let them create your ideal solution. Visit www.safe-2.com. That's www.safe-2.com for more information.
Thank you to our sponsor, Precision Aviation Group. Mission critical operators and fleet managers rely on Precision Aviation Group as a worldwide leading rotor and fixed wing MRO provider. PAG provides tip to tail solutions in four MRO segments, avionics, components, engines, and manufacturing DER services. A single point of contact gives you access to over 150 million in inventory globally, 24 seven. Just call 800-537-2778. Precision Aviation Group. Others sell parts. We sell support. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Vertical Murrow Podcast, brought to you by Vertical Helicast. We hope you enjoyed our discussion about the exciting developments surrounding the upcoming Vertical Maintenance Repair and Overhaul Conference. A big thank you to our esteemed guests, Lena Reno, Mike Reno, Leslie Ferry, and Madison Reno, for sharing their insights and vision for the Murrow Conference. As we've learned, this conference aims to create a vibrant atmosphere for networking, professional development, and crucial hands-on training opportunities in the rotocraft MRO sector. Don't forget to mark your calendars for Kelowna, British Columbia from October 7th to 10th, 2025, and the Dallas-Fort Worth area from November 10th to 12th, 2025. This is a conference you won't want to miss. As always, we encourage you to engage with us in the broader MRO community through social media on Instagram, at vertical.mro. Your voice has helped shape the ongoing dialogue in our industry. Until next time, stay connected, stay informed, and keep building this vibrant MRO community. Cheers. This has been the Vertical MRO Podcast. Join us next time for another edition of the Vertical MRO Podcast, brought to you by Vertical Helicasts.